It's, it's, it, first of all, I want to say how crazy this. This video came out. I mean, how big oversimplified is at this point? It came out and I got spammed to death. Every YouTuber reacts to it. Everyone, everyone reacting to it, man. I got so many messages. It's crazy that when this guy uploads, so much happens, man. Man, this guy is big, man. Put channels. Let's start reacting, boys. By clicking the link below and get a huge Let's discount off go. a two-year plan with a risk-free 30-day money-back guarantee. Himself. Support the guy, man. Out. This guy is and actually amazing. Big shout out to the patrons. Needs to upload Head on over to nice. This is it. Sad One last goes. push, and we're done. <laughs> Congratulations! It's a general. Oh. The Napoleonic Wars. I gotta say, I don't know jack fucking shit. So before we watch this, I wanna I wanna react, right? I don't just wanna watch. That would be weird. I wanna talk about what I know. The French Revolution happened. The peasants were kind of mad against the, the the royals, and they fucked them up. The revolution was very messy and chaotic. There was a French general called Bonaparte. He was like in Nice. He was in the southeast or some shit. And he also left his people behind. And he used the power vacuum. He went to Paris and he was like, I'm the fucking boss now, you motherfuckers. He then brought order to France and then he really fucked people up a lot. And here comes the rest yeah, of the army Yeah, he was an artillery now. commander, yeah. Uh, did you just say the rest of the army? <laughs> <laughs> that is where our story begins. Corsica. In the early 18th century, the island of Corsica was a part of the Republic of Genoa until one day Corsica said, hey, we're declaring independence. Which paradox game introduces Napoleon? It's EU4, right? The problem is I never really played EU4. I only played EU4 in the early game, right? I never went to middle to late game. And it's probably not worth your time to try and stop us. So Genoa said, you're right, it isn't worth our time. Hey, France, you want to buy this island? And France said, sure thing. And thus, Corsica became France, just in time for Napoleon to be born French. Many Corsicans didn't appreciate their new conquerors, however, and from an early age, so Napoleon in a way, Napoleon is Corsican. Sentiments. Napoleon's Not really dad, French, however, if you think about it. embraced his new French overlords, I mean, which created doesn't some fucking matter. between dad and son. <coughs> Ooh, look at me. I'm dad. I wear powdered wigs and silver buckled shoes, and I'm a traitor to the Corsican people. Go to your room, Napoleon. No, you go to your room, dad. Is that child picture of Napoleon? One sec. Jesus Christ, man. You can't trust that child. Fucking hell, man. Okay. On the other hand, Napoleon adored his mother, who was definitely the disciplinary yeah, like Hitler, of the yeah. family. And <laughs> even though true. she would punish Napoleon severely, he kind of respected that. But Napoleon's parents wanted the best for their family. And since they were a very minor nobility, they were able to have Napoleon sent off to the shining lights and rat-infested sewage puddles of the big city. Napoleon went to military school in France. Okay, Napoleon, why don't you introduce yourself to your new classmates? Well, I'm Napoleon, and Back I hate all of you. Back in the day, it was military school, like right? That doesn't really exist anymore. Letter, you go to normal school, and then you go to the military. And you call eggs oofs, like a bunch of big, dumb, idiot dingleberries. Uh, okay. Uh, thanks, Napoleon. I hope you like being bullied. And bullied, he was. Russia they picked on him for his Corsican accent, his family's lack of wealth, and it probably didn't help that he also What's had a Corsican bit of a accent, chip on his shoulder. But he could hold his own, and on an average day, might be found dishing out ratatouille sandwiches for breakfast. He spent much of his time alone, and he loved reading about the great conquerors of history. He learned about Julius Caesar, and he wondered if one day he too might have a pizza franchise named after him. Kind of fucking crazy, though. I don't want to celebrate it. I just want to say it's always been very interesting to me how one single human being reaches a certain level of fame. Like, you're a young kid, and you're like, I want to take over the world, and you actually fucking do it. Like, what the fuck, man? That I, that it's, again, I don't want to celebrate it. I think it's just really impressive. Like, look at us, man. We're just a bunch of fucking monkeys. Just fucking, ooh, ooh, I have the new iPhone. Ooh, ooh. These fuckers. Took over the fucking world, man. He excelled at math and they geography. Did something, and you when know? he graduated at Even the age of 16, bad. he was made second lieutenant in an but artillery you know? regiment. Now, second lieutenant might sound pretty sweet to a screw up like you, but Napoleon had a little something called ambition. Stonks of it. <laughs> and he wasn't content <laughs> being that, just some junior officer. He I mean, not some wanted oh. to rise the ranks. Unfortunately for him, that would be a little difficult. French society was just too closed off. Positions were handed out based on nobility, not talent. And the young Napoleon probably felt stuck. Wouldn't it be nice if, say, a revolution came along and Tomorrow. changed all Thank of that? Too. Well, Tomorrow. what are the chances? The French Revolution is oh. here. Bastille toppling, <laughs> head chopping, king popping. The revolution promised to do away with the old social hierarchy and make everyone a little more equal. Napoleon may not have cared much for the violent mobs, but if it meant he could rise the ranks, he was in.
He began fighting to defend the revolution. He put down a British-sponsored counter-revolution. Military he did. Yeah, I remember. I actually recognized. Recognized. He was I even totally given forgot. his very own army. It was that astonishing like progress for what such a young man of humble origins. To and Napoleon's wildest dreams were coming true. But Napoleon also believed yeah, he could he increase his social status if he married an older, rich lady. And so around this time, Napoleon went on the prowl. However, if some sources are to be believed, he was a verified creep. Napoleon was so ugly, an overall sickly effect was created by his thinness and yellow complexion. <laughs> That's a real fucking quote. <laughs> he, had terrible he probably was actually not so beautiful, but uh, he always was heroized and artist that drew him made him look more better. I guess if you Fuck read the real, read, and real Napoleon, he looks much worse with. than on the picture. Fortunately, he eventually met Josephine, an probably. aging single mother who was deeply in debt and needed stability. Liked the so single she agreed moms, to marry him despite finding him intensely disgusting. Oh. Napoleon, you dirty dog, you've done it. Unbeknownst to Napoleon, however, Josephine had a bit of a promiscuous reputation. Hey, Napoleon, I hear you're marrying Josephine. Boy, she sure is a great kisser. That's right. Hey, wait, what do you mean she's a great kisser? Hey, Hugo, you hear Napoleon's marrying Josephine? Wow, she sure is a great kisser. <laughs> now, hang on just a minute. Hey, everyone, Napoleon's marrying Josephine. She seems oh, on yeah. pitch. Wow, yeah, she sure kisser. is a great kisser. She's real good at kissing. Oh, wow. I'm pretty sure I kissed her just yesterday. Oh, for goodness sake, is there anyone here who hasn't kissed my wife? Yeah, you. <laughs> As Napoleon fell madly in love with his new wife, she fell madly in love with a man named Hippolyte. <laughs> it wouldn't be long, however, before Napoleon- Look out, dude, this is truly, I feel very bad about this. I know nothing about this era. Like all these little lands, I don't know shit about this era. Probably, I never played video games in this era. It's the EU4 era, right? I never played EU4. And now I kind of understand why Napoleon was so successful. His country was united and big. A lot of these countries are like, oh, so France like blue, up war me 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 the rest of Europe. And the war of the first- Like how did France fucking handle that? First coalition began. At first, France he struggled, out. but then care. they started to do surprisingly day. well. And in many conquered territories, they began and to establish sister republics, exporting their revolutionary ideas across Europe. In 1796, they planned a three-pronged attack to take Vienna and knock Austria out of the war, with two magnificent armies in the north to kick ass, and Napoleon in the south as a bit of a diversion. We have to actually return to you for the first time. Fucking America campaign is so much fun. Promise that battle was so much fun right now. Oh, the army he was given were demoralized, lacking equipment, and underpaid. But Napoleon stop pausing. What do you mean? What? Stop pausing. <clears throat> and he took them into Italy. He was outnumbered, and his campaign was partially meant to be a sideshow, but he made it the main show. While the two northern armies were being held back, Napoleon made staggering progress. In a signature Napoleon move, he masterfully split his enemies into two and took them on separately, knocking Sardinia out of the war Pretty and impressive, putting the Austrians man. on the run. Famous Battle of Lodi, he was in the fray, Worth aiming the cannons himself, getting covered in mud and earning the total respect of his men. They respected him so much that when he ordered an almost suicidal assault on the only bridge in town, his men threw themselves at it and took it despite fear. And that's me. I have to pause here because I'm reacting. That's what I am in Bannerlord. A good leader, it says in Sun Tzu's Out of War, leads his men. Not because you want to, but when you lead your men, they feel so connected to you. They feel loyal. They're with you. They have more moral. It's so important to lead your men. That's what I'm doing in Bannerlord. And that's why we have Sian. For Napoleon, it was all he needed to confirm that he was the greatest human who had ever... I foresaw what I might be already. I felt the earth flee from beneath me as if I were being carried into the sky. The problem seems sometimes to be that certain uh, uh, people like Hitler and Napoleon or whatever, thank you, Lord Mold, are getting so successful that they start having a god Very complex sister. and that's where it goes well, down. Napoleon, you're pretty great at this military stuff. Just be careful your head doesn't get too big. Yeah. What did you just say to me, you little prick? And as Napoleon swept Fabian. through northern Italy, the Italians cheered his arrival. Yes, I'm here to liberate you from your cruel Austrian oppressors. But the and band. replaced them with French ones. Oh. Napoleon plundered as he went, sending riches you back to France what? to help its economy, but also paying his men the first real money they'd seen in years. The Pope had been supporting the Austrians, so Napoleon briefly went to go give him a slap. And as he began <laughs> to approach Vienna, the exhausted Austrians were forced to make peace, with oh, Napoleon he's going, overseeing he's going the negotiations over himself. He had just single-handedly knocked Austria out of the war. Damn. And by the way, he was only 28. So maybe it's about Damn, time you moved out of your dad's insane, attic. That's insane, man. In the Italian territories he had conquered, Napoleon established that's new French crazy. sister republics, even writing constitutions and organizing governments himself. Not something a general generally does. When he got back to France, he was hailed as a hero, and the extremely unpopular government were concerned he might get some power-hungry ideas. So they agreed he should go far away from France to Egypt. 
where he could maybe undermine British access to India. Napoleon was eager to win more glory, so he brought with him a team of scholars. Yeah, I didn't even know. Was like, well, I know there's a story about your independence is men now, well, but he wasn't stick. Egypt, man. Well, it's an ugly horse. Man, dude, that, that, I think about this so much. This man has seen so much in his life. He's 28 and he already went through so much stuff. He has seen so much. Dude, the normal basic white western guy, what the fuck did you see? You saw Breaking Bad, that's what you saw. It's kind of fucking crazy what kind of life Whoa, these people had, man. Little man like hey. I'm actually Fucking average hell. height for the time. <laughs> but then British Admiral Nelson came down and wrecked his fleet, and an Anglo-Ottoman force defeated him at Acre. So Napoleon abandoned his men Turkey and went back to France. Fuck you, Napoleon. His campaign in Egypt yeah, he left, them, he left a lot of troops behind. But one thing you should know about Napoleon was that he was a skilled propagandist. He published his own newspapers that sometimes exaggerated his achievements, and even commissioned paintings that generally made him look cool. So when he returned to Paris, he was yet again hailed from, uh, as a before. hero, and he began to get some These people, they let ideas. people make paintings of First, however, better. he had a bit of a problem to deal with. See, he had learned something shocking about his dear <gasps> wife. Really, Josephine? This guy? I'm just as tall as him. I'm sorry, I swear. Now that you're becoming famous, I'll never do it again. Make sure you don't. I've never stooped so low as to cheat on you. Now if you'll excuse me. Abandon horny Embrace epic 30 minutes and by consulting I mean boinking by my generals I mean this woman and by 30 minutes I mean two seconds Having Wait, what through what what happened? He fucked another woman and it was historically shown that he only lasted really short that's not true. How did they know that historically? That's bullshit. His wife, Napoleon, was then approached by a very influential politician who said he had an idea. He wanted to stage a coup against that? the deeply unpopular government and needed the extremely popular Napoleon's help. And Napoleon thought that was just the darn tootinest idea. The plan was to trap the government and convince them to voluntarily give up their power. And here's how they did it. Hey guys. Oh my gosh. Quick. There's a dangerous Jacobin plot to overthrow you, which we definitely aren't just making up. Better get inside this cage so we can protect you. Okay. Gentlemen, we got him. In this case, the cage was an isolated wow. palace outside of Paris, with no one around but Napoleon Fucking and his army. With the government inside, Napoleon then entered, and a pretty chaotic event ensued, during which the government didn't seem entirely sure what was going on, Napoleon's men didn't seem entirely sure what was going on, and Napoleon himself didn't seem entirely sure what was going on. But thankfully, Napoleon's brother Lucien, president of the oh, lower he had a house, brother, I didn't managed know. to regain control, and the remaining councilmen were intimidated into creating a new constitution. And thus, a new government was formed, this time with three consuls in charge. But after Napoleon did some rewriting, in the end, there was really only one man in charge. The first consul. Him. And over the next few years, he worked to consolidate even more power, and essentially became a dictator in total control of France. And by the way, he was Four only 30. He, has. he even still has, nowadays, he has descendants. There's, there's, a guy, there's people in France that are literally descended to him. And they, some idiots wanted to bring them back to power, right? France was now ruled by possibly the greatest military leader of the time. Possibly mm. the greatest? Or definitely. Well, now is his chance to prove it. See, back when Napoleon was still in Egypt being Indiana Jones, back home, France was in France being France. They had conquered even more territory. And they were like, hey, Piedmont, you get revolutionary ideals. Hey, Switzerland, you get revolutionary ideals. And Rome. You get revolutionary ideals. Everybody gets revolutionary ideals. Yeah, the sentence of his brothers nice on himself took okay. him. And Naples. Very cool nail gun. You guys here to get some revolutionary ideas? <laughs> Sacre bleu! As France was still spreading the revolution, and with Napoleon busy in Egypt, the European powers felt the time was right for round two. And the war of the second coalition began. And this time, their big bad boy buddy Russia was here to bang some French boys back to Bordeaux. And bang them, they did. France got blasted. But then Russia pulled out after stolen in Switzerland. And now that Napoleon was in charge of the country, he was ready to start blasting right back. He took command of the army of the reserve and he brought the fight to the Austrians. Now, there are many traits that made Napoleon a great military leader. I already mentioned one of them, how he was one of the boys and commanded the total loyalty of his men. But now we see a second reason, the element of Ooh. surprise. In 1800, Napoleon moved... In a weird way, you could say, I mean, I'm not an expert. In a weird way, you could say uh, one of the early uh, versions of Blitzkrieg doctrine. To Geneva, in a way. And it looked like he was probably going to take on the Austrian it, forces you know? in Germany. There's no way he'd be crazy enough to move his entire army south through the Alps as a surprise attack on the Austrians besieging Genoa. Oh. 
Napoleon's moving his entire army south through the Alps as a surprise attack on the Austrians besieging Genoa. Napoleon's crossing of the Alps is legendary, and you may have seen one of the most famous paintings of the general, popping a sick wheelie on his majestic stallion surrounded by dangerous mountain terrain. Of course, in real life, he made the crossing on a depressed mule. But that's not as cool. When he emerged in Italy, the Austrians expected him to come break their siege, but Napoleon man. went for their supply line near Milan, forcing the Austrians to meet Napoleon head-on at the famous Battle of Marengo. The Austrians initially Napoleon clobbered East the outnumbered to French, history. and they were like, hooray, we won. But then a few hours later, Napoleon showed up again with an even bigger army, and he clobbered them right back. <laughs> Holy cow, this tiny little fun-sized French guy is running rings around us. Hooray! I'm average height for the time, you jerk! Then, after General Moreau's victory at Hohenlinden, Vienna was exposed, and the Austrians again sued for peace. <laughs> Just like the war Austrians. the First Coalition, Always the Second wrecked, Coalition man. ended in another French victory. But in many ways, they both felt more like Napoleon victories. Only the UK remained at war with Napoleon, and they were using their powerful navy to blockade French ports and were even seizing the cargoes of neutral ships. Obviously, everyone else got pretty pissed off that the this British were interfering with man. their trade. So in response, they formed a league, and they embargoed the UK right back. Neutral countries... Who's that? I feel like you're supposed to know who that is. Who is that? Interesting. King George That's Deferred. offensive. So Britain went to Copenhagen and blew a bunch of stuff up, and the league disbanded. But because the UK's economy was pretty bust, they decided to sign a treaty with France in 1802. For the first time in a long time, Europe was at peace. This is truly a period I don't know much sire. about. You've achieved it's kind of sad. I should yes, play more uh, you not for long. I still I mean, don't Victoria trust those dirty Free is going to bring me a little bit into the, the late 1800s. What does that even mean? Keep an eye on them, would you? I can't, sire. Why not? Because they use NordVPN. How would you like to spend 12 hours a day on your favorite website ever without the fear of your data being stolen? Then you need NordVPN. 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 Didn't I actually do a NordVPN commercial like yesterday? Oh no, that's the old one. I already deleted it. What's that? I'm gonna play a full Hoi 4 game of in a <clears throat> I'm gonna play a full <laughs> Hoi 4 game of a <laughs> I'm gonna play a full Hoi 4 game of in a <clears throat> I'm gonna play a full Hoi 4 game of a country that you choose <laughs> this... <clears throat> this is commercials I have to make for Marconi. <laughs> There's much hey, better hey, ones. Boys, Crossing the Alps, defeating the Austrians, and you're an at okay. peace. What a meteoric rise it had been for the young Corsican. He had just taken charge of a nation that appeared to be losing a war and turned it all around, securing French gains in Europe. But but sick, man. there was now a big question. You see... I, I, I just want to make a point real quick. There's something all the time... I'm sorry for doing this right now. All the time, people ask, Tommy, where is the roleplay games? Why no more roleplay games? And here's the point. Let me make a point. When I play roleplay games with you little monkeys that have zero IQ, you take France... You kill everyone and you annex everyone. Here's what good roleplay is. France is only taking a bit. He takes a bit of penalty. He takes a little bit. You see, he doesn't take everything. That's what I was always missing in roleplay games, man. When you win a war, you take a little bit. Like in EU4. I love the EU4 fucking peace system. You beat someone, you take a little bit. You take a little bit. Games in Europe. But you fuck some roleplay games, sorry. No oh, I'm gonna take question. the whole world. Ha! You see, throughout look at me. the chaotic French Revolution, you guys French never governments had struggled to keep the economy afloat. They often didn't have a whole lot of support, and they frequently came and went. Would Napoleon finally be the man who could stick around? Military victories were one thing, but could the general also govern? Spoiler alert. Yes. The economy's crumbling? Well, then. Oh, fuck. I'm reacting to a video that probably gives, gets a lot of views, and I'm eating. Everybody, shout out to Marconi. That's, that's one second, Marconi. Marconi has to edit this video. It gets a lot of views on YouTube, and I'm eating. He also ensured freedom for other religions and is often noted for his positive uh -huh. treatment of Jewish people at a time of widespread anti-Semitism. But while all of this may make Napoleon sound like a pretty stand-up dude, it's good to note that he believed in religious freedom because he thought it was a powerful tool to keep the poor from eating the rich. Or something like that. Overall, Napoleon's aim was to end the chaos of the revolution and finally create a stable and prospering French Republic. And in that aim, he seemed to be largely successful and generally popular with the people of France. Mm. He officially declared that the revolution He's is the over, anti adding, I am the revolution. Napoleon's I head revolution. could be seen for miles. Of course, not everyone was happy with Napoleon's reforms. 
Conservatives felt he was too radical. Radicals felt he was too conservative. But since Napoleon was a dictator, opposition could usually be stamped out with some good old-fashioned iron fisting. In 1804, Napoleon took one last major step. After some failed attempts were made to assassinate him, he wanted to strengthen his position and ensure his dynasty could live on after him. And so he decided being first consul for life simply wasn't quite enough. He decided he should become emperor. He held a vote, asking the French people if they were cool with the idea, and they returned a definitely not rigged 99.9% <laughs> What is that? The fucking uh, election in Syria of Bashar al Khazad? What is that? The right Russian election? Haha, <laughs> what is that? The last Russian election? Haha. <laughs> and so on the 2nd of December, 1804, in an elaborate ceremony at Notre Dame, oh, Napoleon was made emperor. The Pope was even invited. I wish there was like, like an Assassin's Creed, there was a VR set that had to go back in history. I would love to see this day. What was that day like in Paris? The coronation of Napoleon, what did it look like? That must have been such a sight, man. Emperor. But to make sure everyone knew this wasn't some Charlemagne style circular power division, Napoleon lifted the crown and placed it on <laughs> his own head. Like I said, the balls on this man. He was now I fucking Emperor like this guy, of man. the French. He's a well, fucking Napoleon, Chad. Okay, everyone. What the hell is going on? This Corsican guy showed up out of nowhere and he's kicking our ass. He's exporting the ideas of the French Revolution wherever he goes. And he just declared himself King of Italy and Emperor. He can't do that. I'm the Emperor. Oh, hey fellow monarchs. I see you're having a monarch party. My invite must have got lost in the mail. I'll just set up a spot right here. Wow. You don't belong here, Napoleon. We're coming to take you down. I'd like to see you try. Oh, I'm so scared I just pooed my pants. Hey everyone, I just pooed my pants. <laughs> <laughs> Napoleon had even declared himself emperor. The British had already redeclared war on France because both sides had been violating their previous treaty. Napoleon immediately occupied Hanover and then began making plans for a great British invasion. Partially paid for by selling well. a huge chunk of land to the United States. Napoleon gathered his army along. Ah, that's ah, I, I re I'm really learning so much here. That's when they sold that stuff to the USA. I mean, that's really clever. It's like in role play games. You can't protect it anyway. After a while, America is gonna revol revolt and fuck you up, man. Very clever to sell that. It's like when I played role play games and I I'm Portugal and I sell something in India. They're gonna take it anyway. At least English make some money channel. out of it, you know. But here, what's the problem? While Napoleon's powerful army would almost certainly obliterate the British on land, there was very little chance he'd actually make it across the channel because Britannia ruled the waves. This power dynamic would keep the two traditional enemies from engaging in much real direct combat throughout the Napoleonic War. You can really see that it was always very important for the UK to have a big fleet, otherwise they would have been in trouble very often in history. However, the British had something else up their sleeve. That's how this big naval culture. of money. They were willing to throw cash at anyone who would go to war against Napoleon, and there were plenty of takers. Austria, Russia, Naples, and Sweden, hoping to put Napoleon's France back in its place, formed the Third Coalition against France. Third the coalition. coalition forces probably thought that this time How often they stood a fighting chance. Each other? They weren't prepared for the total humiliation they were about to suffer. The war of the Third Coalition was Napoleon at his best. We've already learned two ways in which Napoleon was a great military commander, but here comes one of the biggest reasons speed. He had reorganized his army into corps, which were themselves basically small armies. Each had their own infantry, cavalry, and artillery, and as a result, was able to act more independently. They spread out through the countryside, and by living off the land rather than relying on heavy supply trains, they were able to move extremely quickly. Man, Napoleon would really traverse impressive. massive distances, outmaneuver his enemies, isolate them, and then move in for the kill. Before That's fucking genius, man. Like, being the first guy to come up with this, man, that's... That's very impressive. Something, or they man. even knew what was going on. Jesus. Lightning warfare leading to total destruction. Would you like to see him do it? Here we go. Part of the coalition's plan was for the Russians to meet up with the Austrians and take on Napoleon together. Combined, they could turn the tide against him. So Napoleon needed to stop them from ever meeting. But he's all the way over in Boulogne. No problem. In a matter of weeks, Napoleon marched 200,000 men in secret, encircling Austrian General Mack and capturing his entire army. Mm. A devastating blow. Napoleon later remarked, I have destroyed the Austrian army by simply marching. <laughs> this quote sounds so comedic, but it's so true. Modern warfare, as shown by Napoleon, is quickness, right? We see it in World War II, it's about being mobile, and he was really ahead of his time, it seems. 
Wow. Next, he turned to face the approaching Russians. Okay, it looks wow. like the French are coming for us, but check this out. I've got an amazing idea. When they approach, we run away. Sir, you're a genius. The Russians began to retreat with Napoleon giving chase, and since his tactics relied on quick victories, this could be a problem, especially because the longer the war went on, the more likely it looked other countries may join the coalition against him. But Napoleon knew the Russian Tsar, Alexander I, was young and seeking glory. So he came up with an idea to lure him in. He sent him a message. What does it say? Um, it says, hello, I'm just a little baby boy and I'm very scared. Are you talking like that or is he? He is, sir. Why is he doing that? I don't know, but it's very cute, helpless and vulnerable. Hmm, a little baby boy, eh? Very scared, eh? Cute, eh? Boris? Get my crossbow. We're going hunting. The Allied forces turned to face Napoleon, who they now believed was in a vulnerable position. He was set up at Austerlitz, and to make it look like he was retreating, he had even evacuated the high ground. A thick fog set in, obscuring Napoleon's center as the Allies took the bait and set up on the heights. From there- He gave them the hill and still won? I have to try it in Battle Lord. They spotted Napoleon's very weak looking right flank, and they descended the heights to go get it. Little did they know, it was exactly what Napoleon was hoping Wow, I'm do. actually really the impressed, The next thing man. they knew, a large French force was emerging from the fog, launching a huge central assault up the hill. They swung around, crushing wow. the Allies, and as men attempted to flee across the frozen lakes, Napoleon ordered his artillery to fire on the ice, causing an unknown number to drown. Wow. But he told me he was just a little baby boy. What happened? He tricked you, sir. You mean... I was the little baby boy all along. That's some fucking white walker shit, man. You're walking up the hill. Oh, we got this, man. And then you see the, the fog. How did the pony know about the fog, man? If there wasn't any fog, they would have gotten shut downstairs. And then you see a bunch of French dudes coming up to you, man. That's some scary it fucking shit. It was Napoleon's shit. masterpiece. And Austria were once again forced to make peace with France. This was Dude. the third time Napoleon had had to give Austrian Emperor Francis a good spanking. And so, with the peace treaty in 1805, Napoleon was determined to punish him. He was forced to give up territory, hand over significant compensation, and promised never to fight Napoleon again. For now, Russia, Sweden, and the UK remained at war with France, but none were able to offer much of a threat. And so, Napoleon got to work strengthening his grip over Europe. He Jesus. gave out rule of captured territories to his family and friends, and most notably, he established a new confederation in Germany with himself of the as Rhine. its protector. Seeing his influence in Germany being wiped away, Emperor Francis acknowledged reality and officially dissolved the Holy Roman Empire. And oh, is that the official end of the HRE? Damn. That it existed for over oh. a thousand years. But it wasn't all good news years, for man. Napoleon. Is there movies about this? Battle of Trafalgar? I heard about this before, but it's the first time I actually understand what it is. That must have been a huge like this, battle, man. But in this case... No and again, I know it sounds really weird, but... I wish we could go back in time as a ghostly observer and watch this. What a sight that must have been. It's unimaginable for our brains. Imagine all these ships fighting each other. It, it doesn't go into my brain, you know what I mean? Nelson that must have been mind-blowing. Because he was a genius. Sorry. He successfully punched through the Franco-Spanish line and unleashed hell. His victory ensured British control of the sea, ah, okay. and his death during the battle made him a legend. Oh, he died? What is his name? Damn. I want to read about him tonight. What is his name? Sorry. First Viscount Nelson. Damn, look at that guy. What a fucking... Jesus Christ, look at that dude. When this guy walks in the room, you shut the fuck up. Nelson's flagship from the Falga, the HMS Victory, is still part of the Royal Navy, and you can visit it and walk around it. Holy shit, you can still check that out? That's the real ship that was in the real Battle of Trafalgar? That is so sick. I'm a bit, that's where I'm a, even, I am a bit nerdy. That's fucking so cool. Look how big that is. Like, imagine you walk on that thing. You walk on a thing that was around 200 years ago in a real battle. Napoleon's hopes Damn. for a future British invasion He's were the gone. most famous admiral in all just of that. history. Napoleon was also hoping to secure peace on the continent. He but was that Irish? wasn't looking likely because the Prussian king was under pressure from his wife. He had no Frederick, iron arm, like he's a real pirate. established a confederation in he joined our the Navy when he was 12. And he told us he'd give us Hanover, but how, then offered it. How is no one making movies about people like this? Is there a movie about this Horatio guy? Like, fuck, man. To the British, was you have to declare war on him. What is it with you and war? What is it with you and being a cupcake? Go to war! Okay. In Old October movies. 1806, Prussia, with its famed military because tradition, not American. joined the coalition and declared war, beginning the war of the Fourth Coalition. Unfortunately, Four. Prussian King Frederick William III wasn't the smartest tool in the shed. <laughs> Look at him over there, being all French. 
Makes me sick. <laughs> Boys, we'll get him this time. But here's the thing. This time, we have to stick together. Do not under any circumstances <laughs> face Napoleon by yourself. You all saw what happened to Austria. Uh, hey, where's Fred go? <laughs> hey, you jerk. Think you're some kind of big shot? Huh? Want to tangle with Fred? You don't got the cojones. We're screwed. Without consulting its allies, Prussia had gone ahead and sent Napoleon an ultimatum, demanding he move all his forces out of Germany. Now, some of you watching this video probably can't even wipe your own bum bum yet. But even you know, you don't just send Napoleon an ultimatum. Obviously, Napoleon went in for the kill. Prussia's army was quite outdated, so when they met the twin battles of Vienna and stream. Auerstedt, it wasn't even close. Even Marshal Davout's heavily outnumbered corps at Auerstedt sent the Prussians running, and Napoleon carried out a ruthless pursuit you, uh, of his Joel? fleeing enemy, taking Berlin, and within a single month, decimating the Prussian Dude, this forces. This guy just wrecked everybody Frederick for years. And the remnants of his army moved to the east. Oh, this, this is point, where it goes Napoleon's wrong. This forces is where were it pretty goes tired. Wrong. Winter had come, and conditions were miserable. He anticipated both sides would settle into winter quarters, but Russia decided to try their hand at an unexpected winter attack. A series of brutal battles followed that took a heavy toll on both sides. Should have not gotten the in there, man. You don't fucking touch in Russia. Blizzard man. conditions. Men froze to death, and many deserted. The Russian artillery yeah. tore the French to shreds. Yeah, and you Napoleon don't go to Russia, man. Was momentarily under risk of being captured. In the end, the, then after winter came <clears throat> and the fighting continued, the Russians were pushed back to Friedland, where Russian general yeah, he will say, I fought made a bit of a blunder very fast. by That's positioning what he say, himself yeah. with the Alla River to his back. The French artillery were able to pin the Russians between the river and their concentrated gunfire, a major element in Napoleon's fighting style, and many Russians drowned as they tried to escape. War of the Fourth How many Coalition. many fucking people died in, because of Napoleon, Napoleon. Man. Jesus. I've heard that some of you are still not subscribed, man! What's this, man? After all these years of all this work? If you don't subscribe right now, I'm coming to you tonight. I know you. some of you are into that. Subscribe. Back to the video. Gentlemen, let's watch part two of the Napoleonic Wars. Just After something the minutes. Third and Fourth Coalition Wars, Napoleon had decisively defeated all three of his main rivals on the continent, and he was now undoubtedly the master of Europe. After the Battle of Friedland, his enemies sued for peace, and they all met on a raft on a river for negotiations. They had been fighting for the past four years, but now Napoleon and Alexander surprisingly got along like a house on fire. They chatted long into the night. They kissed. The two oh, had a lot of mutual respect, and Napoleon even told his Was wife... Was kissing like a big thing back then? ...that if Alexander were a woman, I would make him my mistress. Kind of a weird thing to say to your wife, Napoleon. In the end, they came to an amicable agreement. Russia would lose barely any land, and in return, they'd they join had France against the UK there? and invade Sweden. Win-win. On the other hand, Frederick William III was sidelined, and Prussia lost an enormous amount of territory to French client states. Damn. Only the UK remained as the last major like threat to Napoleon, and they continued to be a big thorn in his side, constantly funding his enemies and using their powerful navy to wreak havoc on French trade and overseas That must be very annoying, right? But what could Napoleon It's like in Hoi 4, you, you can't invade him because you have no fleet, so he just fucking annoys you everywhere. Do. The British were safe across the channel. Well, he said, if I can't fight yeah, you with guns, on the cheek. Yeah, I'll sure, fight you pixel, with no. money. Earlier in 1806, Napoleon had announced the Continental System, a total shutoff of the UK from continental trade. No one in Europe was to trade with Britain, and Napoleon hoped that by hitting their economy, he could force them to negotiate. The British economy Clever. did take a hit. Oh, is this Brexit? Oh, no, sorry. And they responded in their typical fashion by going to Copenhagen and blowing a bunch of stuff up. But in general, the British this guy knows how to fucking explain shit. Their trade with other Unlike parts Red of the Monkey, world. Not many neutral band. countries Fuck found you. themselves stuck between a rock and a hard place as the two European superpowers demanded they cease trade with the enemy. Hey, America, you better not trade with the French or else I'll come burn down the White House. What? This is going to wreck my economy. I need to start saving money. How the heck am I going to start saving money? That was the second time. Oh, wait, it was a different time? What? It's like, it, what? Yeah, that's right. You know where this is going. Do you like shopping in store? Of course not. Then you'd have to get up and use your legs. Gross. I feel old, man. Today my knee hurt. I was I was on a cashier. I was in a store, and I had to literally move my leg because my leg hurts. I'm well, what if I told man. you you could save money doing your shopping from the comfort of your own outhouse, oh, allowing wow, you to upgrade really? your outhouse is it Amazon? to a porta potty? 
go you. <laughs> Honey is a free browser extension that scours the internet for promo codes uh, and applies the best one it can find. Click on the link below. Join honey.com slash oversimplified and you can get Honey for free in two Actually, very cool idea to make this app, man. That's the makers of Honey are Make an app that collects uh, promo codes. saving money on your Good online idea, shopping. If you were in the Lions then and you had to promote a new business idea. What idea would you have? Do I have a business idea? I ah uh, the dick towel is though. Oh, you're right. The dick towel is a big fucking idea I have. Yeah. True. The dick towel is my biggest business idea. Making yep. peace with the Russians, a yep. continental blockade, and blowing up Copenhagen. I had honey one year. I didn't get a single being blown up yet. for doing almost nothing. Maybe and under blow? significant pressure from Napoleon, the Danish officially sided with France. But Napoleon's blockade had the biggest effect yeah, my on continental Europe, idea. who were now cut off from a major trading partner, one that controlled the seas and held a rich, growing empire. Like and a lot of countries didn't fully comply. Portugal, a traditional British ally, refused to take part. No problem. Napoleon sent an army and invaded. But it wasn't just Portugal. Many of Napoleon's allies were also suspect. Your Majesty, it seems that Spain isn't properly enforcing your blockade. Spain? Why not? Well, it appears they've been trying to find a way out of being your ally since they lost their fleet at Trafalgar. What is with these people? It's almost like everyone's only pretending to be my ally because they know otherwise I'd beat them up. Do I even have any real friends? Are Princess. you my friend, Pierre? Say yes or I'll slap you. Napoleon had come to mistrust his ally to the south. And in particular, Napoleon thought the Spanish royal family were an incompetent mess. All right, Carlos, you've got to get it together. How can I trust you when all you do is go hunting? Meanwhile, you let this ambitious nobody who dislikes me run the country. And you seem to be the only person in the universe who doesn't realize he's boinking your wife. And what's worth... Who the heck are you? What of cooking going son. on in these I just went through my man. dad. So, actually, now I'm the king. You people are the biggest cluster of shameless, narcissistic idiots and all around just the worst people I've ever met. Here, have a Kid's Choice Award. French forces, many having conveniently already entered Spain to invade Portugal, occupied Spanish forts, and Napoleon invited the Spanish royals to France to help mediate their differences. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're here with the royal family of Spain. So, Fernando, you've been accused of plotting against your father and vying for the Spanish throne. What do you have to say for yourself? Well, Napoleon, I That's just think we're right. Well, I've got the test results right here. Fernando, in the case of the Spanish throne, you are not the king. <laughs> and no, Carlos, you are also wow. not the king. Uh, thank you very cool, King. Oh, shit. He didn't make himself Spanish king, did he? Actually, Napoleon yeah. made his brother the king, but oh. for all intents and purposes, Spain oh, that's was gonna now his mad. puppet. He expected the Spanish people to be over the moon at the removal of their unpopular royal family. Imagine his surprise when it turned out that people... You should have installed... That was unclever. He should have installed a loyal... Spanish guy that I was really like to be subjugated by a foreign power. That's like minus 50 opinion in Crusader Kings, right? The Catholic Church. And so the people of Spain revolted. Brutal uh, fighting broke out move. as bands of armed Spaniards ambushed French troops across the kingdom, and vicious atrocities were committed on both sides. Oh, shit. In addition to fighting the regular Spanish and Portuguese forces, the French had to contend with tens of thousands of guerrilla A fighters big throughout the Spanish by countryside. The British even took the opportunity to land an army led by the future Duke of Wellington. And now, British forces were defeating French ones on land. Napoleon briefly went to Spain in person, and he did drive back the Allied armies. Yeah, but Napoleon before long, just a big his bubble. attention was needed When he comes elsewhere. in, then you're fucked. The whole thing became a nightmare for the emperor. He excelled at traditional warfare, but this was something more akin to Napoleon's Vietnam. The whole conflict would keep hundreds of Without thousands warfare, of French soldiers really the and resources one that always fucks bogged up the big down guys, for huh? years. Napoleon was never able to break the will of the Spanish people, and this problem weakened his position in Europe. <laughs> hey, Francis. Want to go to war with Napoleon again? Oh, I don't know, Britain. He's already whomped me three times. I'll give you a bazillion so pounds. <laughs> well, okay. Seeing man. that Napoleon was now caught up in Spain and with some British funding, Austria decided maybe, just maybe, this time, they'd have a chance. Fifth so war. So did they? It's like no one learned anything. Napoleon defeated them in just four months. It was quick. How often does Napoleon have to beat the Austria until he does something about it? Like... But it wasn't How often exactly does he have to easy. Step these guys? The Austrians had been watching Napoleon and learning, and they had made some reforms. While Napoleon, meta, after years of war, meta, was increasingly you, having to rely on inexperienced conscripts. So this time, the Austrians gave him a run for his money. 
The fifth coalition saw some of the bloodiest battles to date, the including Napoleon's first then. major defeat. And when he did finally defeat the Austrians at the Battle of Wagram, it was a very costly victory. Oh. Still, Napoleon so had yet again kicked Francis's shit, butt, and as part of the peace terms, Austria lost a bunch more land. Not long <laughs> after, however, Napoleon Fucking and Francis yeah. came to another agreement. It was decided that Napoleon would marry Francis's young daughter. But wait, doesn't Napoleon already have a wife? Well, yes, he did. Josephine and Napoleon had become quite fond of one another, but now that Napoleon was playing the monarch game, he needed a male heir, and his aging wife wasn't giving him one. So it was out with the old and in with the new. Adios. At least he didn't behead anyone. For Austria, they felt that if Napoleon was going to keep on winning, they may as well be on his side. So through the marriage, yeah. Napoleon got an alliance with Austria and a this beautiful you, baby potato. Between the failing blockade against Wait, he had a baby? Britain, oh. the ongoing war in Spain, and now his recent struggles in Austria, cracks in Napoleon's invincibility were beginning to show. But still, look at this map. So blue, so beautiful. Even Sweden, after being pulverized by Russia, overthrew their king, and after an interesting chain of events, ended up putting one of Napoleon's own marshals in charge. Marshal Bernadotte took the name Karl Johan and became Crown Prince of Sweden after agreeing to join Napoleon's continental system. For now, Sweden was Team France. Napoleon was on top of the world. He had won an endless string of victories. All he had to do now was sit back and not make any major miscalculations that could completely turn the tide of war. So let's see what comes next. That's some CK2 shit right there. It is, it is. France's alliance with Russia was a terrifying prospect. Together, the two could have been unstoppable, but unfortunately, the alliance didn't last. The Russians felt they weren't getting a fair deal. Napoleon's Duchy of Warsaw right on their doorstep was a bit of an insult. And then their economy began to tank. Second mistake, man. You have to appease Russia. You have to give them shit so they shut because the fuck up. Because of Napoleon's up. British Another blockade. Big mistake, and man. eventually, they began to open up trade. Your Majesty, it seems Alexander is no longer abiding by the continental system and has begun trading with the British. Alexander? But he kissed me. His he son died when he was 21. You. you wouldn't get it, Pierre. No one would ever kiss you. <laughs> The security of Napoleon's empire depended on removing the British threat, and he wasn't happy with Russia's backdoor shenanigans. And so in 1812, Napoleon decided to go to war. He gathered together the most massive That's army Europe had ever seen, made up You can be the greatest leader of all times, they all start making troops mistakes, from man. every corner of his empire all fucking humans, man. to invade. Okay, it Even looks Napoleon. like Napoleon's coming for us. Generals, I need ideas. We could stand and fight. No, that's stupid. You're stupid. We could run away. You you're a star. You'll remember Napoleon's tactics relied on astonishing speed to outmaneuver his enemy and force a quick, decisive battle. Well, I've got two words for you. Scorched earth. If his opponent retreated while scorching the earth, his men couldn't live off the land. And if his men couldn't live off the land, he the needed his supply trains. Changes, and if man. he needed his they supply trains, he couldn't move quickly. And if he couldn't move quickly, he could not maneuver his enemy. And if he could not maneuver his enemy, I think you get the point. Napoleon launched his invasion and hoped for a quick battle, but all he could do was try to catch the retreating Russians while moving deeper and deeper men. into hostile territory. Jesus As he Christ. went, the horribly hot summer devastated his army. His the men died of heat, people up in exhaustion, Russia, that's a new one. and disease. Supplies began to run out, and his men began to starve. Many deserted, and still the Russians continued to retreat. Numerous times, Napoleon considered so turning back, big, but that man. little voice in his head kept on telling him, keep going, just a little further. And don't worry, you're Fucked definitely up, average height for the time. He nearly caught the Russians at Smolensk, but it was his birthday, so he had a party instead. When he finally reached Moscow, he predicted the Russians wouldn't be willing to give up such a historic and holy city without a fight. And he was right. The Russians finally turned to face him for the single deadliest day of the Napoleonic Wars, the Battle of Borodino. The Russians fought valiantly, and as he got older, Napoleon's battle tactics seemed to become a little less refined and a little more run straight at the enemy, try not to die. He launched a full frontal assault at the Russian defenses, and as a result, the death toll was colossal. The Russians eventually decided to retreat, leaving Moscow to fall into Napoleon's hands. Quick, the French are taking the city. Release all these prisoners immediately and tell them to burn it to the ground. Well, well, Jimmy the arsonist, clever, you are not going to believe your luck. Moscow went up in flames, and as Napoleon entered, was it became very clear his army wouldn't European be able population. to stay there Jesus. very long. But he had just defeated the Russian army and taken their most beloved city. In his mind, he had won. So he sent Tsar Alexander in St. Petersburg a letter. Your Imperial Majesty, Napoleon requests your surrender. How shall I respond? You shan't, Dmitri. Ever? Ever. But, Your Majesty, 
It will be winter the fucking soon. Russians, the man. You can't fuck with these guys, 500 man. miles into Russian you territory with, with dwindling guys. supplies. If we don't say anything, well, then they'll all die. Oh! After waiting for a response for about One a month, the first snow months. of winter began to fall, and Napoleon sensed the catastrophe that was about to unfold. He decided their only choice now was to get out. And that's when it happened. It got cold. Stupid cold. Oh, His glorious wrecked. invasion had just become a race Story for survival. Of As the Russians life. realized the French were fleeing for their lives, they began to close in on their supply line. Men froze to death, their horses as well. There was starvation what a huge and disease. Mistake, man, to go the injured there. and dying could only be left by the side of the road, as it was too slow to try to carry them. And all along the way, boy. the dreaded Russian Cossacks How many stopped the bleeding West French army, Moscow, and every now and then, in the last in for a years. quick attack. Napoleon, fearing capture, kept that. a vial of poison around his neck. At one point, the Russian armies nearly trapped him against the Berezina River, but too. a little Napoleon cleverness gave him the old Jeffrey Duke, tricking them into thinking he was going south and then escaping across rapidly built pontoon bridges to the north. When the Russians realized where he was and began to close in, the French burned the bridges before everyone could cross. Hundreds drowned and thousands were captured. At this point, Napoleon got wind of plots against him forming in Paris, so he abandoned his men. And another, imagine a movie or a book about that. Just a movie about a random ass soldier and that army. Like in the beginning, you're like, that's kind of what the the, the this German TV show is about. Our mothers and fathers, it's about that. There's a young German soldier going to Russia and like, oh, we're going to win easy, haha. And then it's, it slowly goes down and down and down. And in the end, it's the biggest horror ever, man. And went back to France. The remaining like French stragglers yeah. made it across the border. It's been estimated over 600,000 men story, went man. into Russia, yeah, less than 100,000 returned. Napoleon was now in a very precarious situation. Dude, His one mistake, had just man, been so obliterated, far. and the other European leaders smelled blood. Here was an opportunity to take advantage of a weakened Napoleon, regain territory and influence, and liberate Europe from his dirty French paws. And so they began to turn. Prussia soon broke their alliance and switched sides. A lot of people are saying Austria very good thing about the duelists. Neutrality. I might actually Even check that Sweden, out. Sweden, led by one the of duelist. Napoleon's old marshals, joined the Allies, partly due to Napoleon's earlier invasion of Swedish Pomerania. The War of the Sixth Coalition uh, had begun. The coalition forces meme. had been reforming their armies, and they were now much better. And the UK had also significantly amped up its financial aid to its continental allies. Their armies quickly advanced through Poland and into Germany. In Paris, Napoleon was understandably freaking out. Yeah. He needed to put together a new army fast, and he called up over a hundred thousand new conscripts, mostly teenagers. He also put his factories into the overdrive, Jugend. and he was like, You, make more rifles. You, build new cannons. You, make more horses. I don't make horses. Then who makes horses? Horses make horses. Explain how. Well, when a daddy horse and a mommy horse love each other very much. Yes, go on. Scraping well, the then barrel. the daddy horse... I'm sorry, Napoleon. You're 43. I thought you'd know this stuff. Don't touch me! I'm gonna be sick. As it turned out, Napoleon's lack of horses would take the biggest toll on his army, since his tactics relied on speed, maneuverability, Just and like destruction. Wolf, man. If you when don't he took the horses, fight man. to the Allies in 1813, he did defeat uh, them and set them it's running. Coming. But Hopefully. lacking cavalry, he was unable to effectively pursue and destroy. He needed horses. For the Allies, being defeated in battle by a man whose army was now full of inexperienced conscripts Very soon we're coming to my city. So both sides were like, hold up. Time out. The Allies were somewhat cornered, and had Napoleon kept going, it's possible he could have won. But instead, he agreed to a brief truce with the Austrians mediating between the two sides. When Austria demanded Napoleon make major concessions, Napoleon told them to shove it. Having had their terms rejected, Austria felt now they were justified in saying, "Well, we tried," and they joined Thank the you, coalition. Jessica. Thank you, man. Okay, everyone, look at us. The boys. You're going to have together, peace. But at some Napoleon point, you just make mistakes, man. So, so we need a plan. No Any emperor ideas? rules forever. Hmm. Except Ooh, Xi Jinping. I know. Uh, no, forget or it. Putin. That's stupid. <laughs> uh, Thank uh, you, Jacoby. Thank you, mate. What? I've got it! When he approaches, we run away. Genius. He's a genius. The plan was as follows. Wherever Napoleon advanced, whoever he advanced on would avoid battle, <laughs> That's allowing genius. the others to sweep in from the... Dude, really, the meta changes, man. You might have a good meta for a while, but these new people, Sides, they're gonna be your meta. The French marshals guarding his flanks. Essentially, the plan was, don't try to fight Napoleon. And this plan worked Genius. tremendously. Very the Allies tough. scored a number of victories that saw Napoleon move back to the city of Leipzig. There we are. There we are looking at me. I literally live five minutes away from the battle. There's a huge monument here, man. I live he very, very close uh, to the battle. Major stand as the, the Allies converged in on him from all sides. The stage was set. 
for the biggest and bloodiest battle of the Napoleonic Wars. Uh, crazy, there's a lot of shit here about this in the city. There's a, there's a graveyard right next here, and there's a little hill. And there's a monument with Napoleon's head, and they, it says, this is the hill where Napoleon stood to watch the battle. Battle of Leipzig. Got Almost dust. half a million troops from over a dozen nations stretched across the battlefield. And the they reenact it. Uh, once a year, you can go somewhere here as I was kid, and they reenact the battle. It's really funny. The French found themselves fighting there's on like, all um, sides. There's like guilds in this area where I live where these men, it's their hobby to, to be actors of this war. And once a year, they meet with hundreds of people and they make the battle. It's for four days against the Austrians, versus Prussians, Swedes, and Russians. It's no wonder this battle is also sometimes referred to as the Battle of the Nations. Like the French fought ferociously, but ultimately yeah, were no match for the coordinated efforts of the imagine, coalition. At imagine point, a cinematic battle. Saxon troops allied with the French had a team huddle. Imagine and making like, this battle hey guys, cinematic. I'm pretty sure the cinema. French are losing. Let's switch sides. And so they did. When it became clear that Napoleon couldn't win, he ordered a retreat across the only bridge over the river. The Allies swarmed into the city, and, they and desperate through, right? fighting raged in the streets. Okay, Shh. Corporal, after everyone has crossed the river, imagine what to that the bridge. must have felt okay? like. Not before everyone's crossed, after. You Sexist. got that? Yes, Colonel, I'm not five. I can comprehend time. Good. Boom. Wait, did he say before or after? Well, fortune favors the bold. The bridge was blown early, and 30,000 French troops were yeah. stranded and captured. A disaster. These and with that, must have the dominoes huge. were beginning to come crashing down on Napoleon in the south. My dad used to be in Renekton as a hobby, and whenever cavalry charged, they had to be super careful, and often someone got broken leg. True story, when I was a kid, I was watching the reenaction of this battle, and they had uh, fake cannons. They had cannons, and they would ch ch and then boom, but there was no cannon in it. And I will never forget, true story, I was a kid, man, and a guy is doing the thing, chuk, 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 and it, it doesn't go off, and he puts his uh, head uh, close to the cannon, and the cannon goes off, boom! And I was a kid, I didn't understand yet, but um, he, he was really fucked, man. He, they called the hospital and shit, I remember. I, that's what I remember, and another thing I remember is, they were in front of each other, and uh, cannon inside a cannon? What? What did I say? You know what I mean? And they stand in front of each other, and they're like, shoot! And then they fall over. And, and I was a kid, I was like, oh, this is so real. This is a real battle. And then these fuckers, right in front of me, there was these people laying on the ground, like these old German boomers. And they're like, oh, hey, John, you want to have a barbecue th this weekend? And I was like, you're ruining my immersion. The British, you the, all these corpses were talking. Hey, how's your wife, man? I hated that. Take your craft serious. Be a good actor. Wellington had been pushing the French out of Spain for the past few Fail years. Role play. And were now crossing into France. Austrian armies had pushed into Italy. While Napoleon's old flamboyant cavalry commander, of Mura, who play. Napoleon had made king of Naples, decided to switch sides. German states, many resentful after years under Napoleon's thumb, turned against him. And the Confederation of the Rhine collapsed. It seems like that when you are a dictator, here's the tip for any future dictators watching the stream. When you are a dictator and you can't take over the world, you have to make a lot of concessions you have to make people happy they need to be good ruler give them rights install rulers with their culture you can't be an ass right it will always come back to you bernadotte invaded denmark you gotta be nice like i don't know for example you take denmark you gotta be yo sorry for taking you i'm giving you a danish ruler who's loyal to me i'm giving you trade i'm giving you cool laws maybe five percent less taxes you gotta be forced fucking to join nice. the coalition and the, the, the peasants have to liberated. like you man right you'd think napoleon might have seen the writing on the wall but he was napoleon you have to be like the empire in star wars right when hatsuk in, in, in the mandalorian when he says the empire it's good to be and so instead, he prepared to keep fighting. As attitudes in Paris were already I'll beginning turn to turn against him, hey, he pulled out more okay? conscripts to defend the exhausted nation. As for the Allies, they weren't sure exactly what they were aiming for here. A few peace offers were floated that may have let Napoleon <laughs> keep his position. But the British kept throwing around even more money, and eventually, they all agreed that the ultimate aim was the deposition of Napoleon Damn, I mean, entirely. Napoleon and so, Napoleon embarked on one of his time, most man. famous campaigns to defend the homeland. He was completely outnumbered, but the Allied armies had split up and spread out. His army was so small that was he could move at like speed, and he used this to his advantage. In the famous Six Days campaign against Prussian General Blücher, he attacked from all directions and defeated Blücher's forces four times. Dude, what are the stats of Napoleon? When Napoleon died, you look at his stats, the guy must have won, what, 50 battles and lost like two? 
That guy has some sick stats. Only suffering a tenth of the casualties he inflicted, that guy must even have with his back completely to the wall. Insane stats, Napoleon man. was still Napoleon. Then he turned south to take on Schwarzenberg's six, army six, of Bohemia six. and enjoyed even more victories. However, Napoleon's problem he had a was that he couldn't be everywhere at once, and Smurfing. wherever he wasn't, the Allies continued Marshall. to push towards Paris. He made one last ditch attempt at moving in behind the enemy lines and cutting off their communications, but Paris was in disarray, and the he people probably had the were highest sick KD of war. History. One ambitious and slightly treacherous politician sent the. I mean, uh, the the first video said that uh, Napoleon was often leading his troops in the beginning, so he probably seen battle firsthand and actually killed people. Now, obviously, he was a soldier. He probably took a lot of lives by himself. By himself. Arms a letter, basically saying, "Hey guys, come like on you and in." Ben and so, they did. The city's defenders surrendered, and as the Allied leaders entered Paris, the people That's cheered pretty them fucking as insane. bringers of peace. Paris had fallen. Quick, marshals, gather your men. Imagine We're gonna launch an assault Napoleon. on Paris. <laughs> oh, I'm dying. At least was Napoleon. Napoleon. Hey. They all left and told me to give you this note. Napoleon's marshals had realized what he hadn't. It was over, and they insisted all that was left now for the good of France was for him. To it's like Hitler's bunker. And without the support French of edition. his army, Napoleon had no choice. He hoped his son could take his place, but it was decided instead to restore the old Bourbon monarchy. Old King Louis XVI's brother would become the King of France. Mm. It was almost like the French Revolution had yeah, never that's even weird. happened. But what will we do with Napoleon? Why did we you can't have a hyperactive 44-year-old menace running around reigniting. Like, I, like, I, I never understood that one. Why not just execute him? Why send him away? Like, that's so stupid. The guy... Fuck the whole continent for 50 years and you're just fucking letting him go somewhere on a nice beautiful island? In revolutionary ideals and plotting I never his return. That well, because of respect. Why don't we send him? Dude, the guy mm, killed thousands of people. There. What do you the mean location respect? Chosen for it's barbarous? Was the small island of Elba, just off the coast of Italy. Napoleon would have become a monster over the island and even got to keep hey, the if title. If I was the Prussian king, I'd be like, ah, chop set off. GG. The allies must have been in stitches no risk, when they came up with that. When he learned what his fate was to be, he drank the poison he had been keeping around his neck. But it had gone out of date, so instead of a quick and painless death, he got a painful stummy wummy instead. Before he oh, left, he tried to kill himself and didn't work. That's in... dude, this is a movie, France, bro. He addressed his oldest and closest That's guard crazy. one last time, making an emotional speech that ended with him kissing their flag. And off he went. Oh, to he had exile. like a personal guard. Must the have deal been that really... was given to him was actually quite He's generous. His... But imagine you're part of Napoleon's personal guard. You probably are a fucking Spartan, man. You've seen a lot, man. Family were given you titles. probably went he was through a lot of shit. A state pension from France, and he was able to receive many distinguished visitors, all eager to come and meet the famed emperor. And he ruled over Elba well, improving infrastructure and introducing many legal. <laughs> oh, he, he was even allowed to rule the island, and he took care of it. I'm actually gonna be here soon. Reforms aimed at improving life on the island. He, they cried Napoleon when he addicted. Just coming in to check on how it's uh, all probably went with Mox, for long But it time. wasn't all good. For one thing, he learned of the death of his first wife, Josephine, and was deeply saddened. He was forbidden from seeing his son and current wife. And in Austria, Emperor Francis had ordered a local count to seduce her so she would forget about Napoleon. Then, the new King Louis XVIII refused to give Napoleon his agreed pension. He was under constant threat of assassination, yeah. and there were even rumors that the Allies were thinking of relocating him somewhere even more remote. But the biggest problem was that Napoleon was once the master of Europe. He had lived a thrilling life of adventure, fame, and glory. Now, he found himself on a tiny island in the Mediterranean, and he was bored. Wouldn't it be nice if he could somehow return to France and reclaim his throne? Hey, Napoleon, want to go back to France and reclaim your throne? I yeah. would. I, mean, I, I learned a lot how? from these videos, well, man. I, was I, we I really learned a lot here. Will that work? I learned... The number one thing yes. I learned in these videos, though, is that Pierre, Horatio Nelson is no the greatest fucking you. dude ever. Yes, sire. Well, pucker up, boyo. <laughs> Yay. When Napoleon left Elba, it wasn't really the daring escape you might think. I'm he basically he had for kind right of a leaving ceremony, yeah, this makes you want to play hopped games, on a right? ship, and sailed back to France. He brought with him an army of about a thousand men, and he began his journey to Paris. However, in Paris, there was now a new king, and at first, the people largely accepted him, because the last few years of war under Napoleon had brought immense death and economic suffering. That's right, the king is back, baby. Divine right to rule. Don't worry, everyone. I know the economy is kaput, but I and my They're courtiers will withdraw into this better. palace. Listen, and the, we greatest, will definitely the greatest, the greatest character in was obviously Leonidas II. Everything. There's no question about that. That was the real ultimate alpha male. Oh yeah. 
That's why we got rid of the king. As the Bourbon <laughs> monarchy began to look more and more like a return to the past, and the returning nobility seemed hellbent on regaining their lost privileges, the people weren't too happy. I would love to learn more about these, these heroes of history. People, certain people in history, mostly men in this, right, that, that did something um, 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 extraordinary. I would love to... Don't do it right now. I, I'm careful what to say because you guys are going to spam me. I would love to hear more about big heroes in history and read about their stories and watch their videos live on stream. Uh, you guys are obviously very educated about that. And maybe soon I will ask you guys about certain heroes that, that undoubtedly did the crazy shit and, and so, Napoleon achieved a lot. And I would like to... Would be met with oh my God, look at chat. Jesus in the Christ. End, I should the reaction have said was that. a little mixed, but many were happy to see their old emperor. Your Majesty, it seems that Napoleon is back and marching this way with a thousand men. Alexander pretty much at the biggest no people. Problem. Yeah, true. I have hundreds of thousands of men. Send them to arrest him. Uh, Your Majesty, it seems the thousands of men we sent to arrest Napoleon have all joined his side. <laughs> well, I'm off to Belgium. If you ever need a king again, <laughs> be sure to let me know. <laughs> As Napoleon continued his journey, the king had sent battalions of men to stop him, but they largely comprised of Napoleon's old soldiers, many unhappy with King Louis's military reforms. <laughs> and so, when ordered to arrest him, That's like they simply Agar couldn't I do it. Just keep In feeding one him. famous incident, the troops began to cry out, Long live the emperor. When Napoleon reached Paris, with King Louis having fled, he entered unopposed to reclaim his throne. Napoleon was back how, from the how dead. How did the LA's okay, let that happen? Now that we finally got rid of that guy, him. let's try to make sure something like this can never happen again. What's that doing there? Hey, fellow monarchs. <laughs> this time, Napoleon promised he would be a mucho mucho good boy and not start any wars. But the Allied leaders were having none of it. They declared Napoleon an outlaw and the illegitimate ruler of France. Then they declared war, not on France, but on Napoleon himself. And when you have multiple empires declaring war on you as Clever. an individual, that's how you know you're a very naughty boy. <laughs> the Allied powers began making plans to combine their forces and once again invade France. The most immediate threat to Napoleon I mean, how were the Napoleon British and Prussians hanging out in nearby Belgium. If Napoleon could knock them out quickly, maybe he could force the Allies to negotiate and maybe he could hold on to the his power. Together, officer. the two armies to the north outnumbered him, so he made a plan to divide them and take them on separately. Historians debate how much of a chance Napoleon had here, but this same strategy of dividing and conquering had worked for him multiple times. He marched north with 125,000 men and took on the Allies in a number of initial engagements, defeating the Prussians before turning to take on the British. But to Napoleon's dismay, miscommunication and hesitation among his marshals allowed both enemy armies to retreat. And crucially, rather than fleeing east, the Prussians moved north, where they could remain in contact with the British. Napoleon sent a force to hold off the Prussians as he moved in on the British, now holding a defensive position at Waterloo. Prussian General Blücher sent word that he would come to Wellington's aid if he could just hold off the French for long enough. Napoleon had to defeat Wellington That's the Battle of before Waterloo. the Prussian army could arrive about in that. There's also, uh, sorry for pausing. Like, that looks so sick, man. I, I don't know why I'm so into these paintings. I think they look so sick. I mean, you shouldn't celebrate this because these people were probably suffering very hard. Probably wasn't a good day for them. But these paintings are so fucking interesting, man, in my opinion. And it was close. The British you don't have paintings like this nowadays anymore. Imagine uh, Donald Trump wins like, the presidency and someone makes an oil painting how he's walking down the escalator and shit, man, you know? These pictures don't... Why? Why, though? Why don't we make cool pictures anymore about this stuff? The high ground and a number of key defensive buildings we across the battlefield. Now? After waiting yeah, some true. hours he didn't Makes have yeah, for the, the ground to dry, but the, Napoleon the sent men so to assault work. the Hougoumont farm, but the British German garrison there held out. French Marshal Ney launched a number a of war. miscalculated cavalry charges at the British lines. The British formed defensive square formations, and they tore the French cavalry to shreds, while one guy chose the absolute worst time to go on a bender. The French did manage to capture a farmhouse directly in front of the British line, and from there, they unleashed artillery hellfire on the British square formations. And as Napoleon sent his Imperial Guard in to finish the British off, a nervous guard. Wellington knew his lines were at breaking point. But the Prussians had earlier begun to arrive, and now they were arriving in large numbers. And after the British held out and sent the French Imperial Guard running, the French lines panicked, fearing they had been encircled, and they G -G, began well to flee. The Battle of Waterloo was an Allied victory. And with that, Napoleon's hopes of returning to glory were vanquished. He knew I mean, he was defeated. He went to the maybe British. Maybe he was just said, older now and was a bit more stupid. He, he will have known there's no and way the he's going to win that. 
No. Instead, to make sure Napoleon was put away once and for all, they sent him to one of the most isolated... How can you not kill him at this point? After all this, you still don't execute him? And you gotta be shitting me. They could think of a tiny island in the Saint Atlantic Helena. Ocean, Saint Helena. Here, a deeply isolated and depressed Emperor Napoleon would live the remaining years of his life. His house was a wooden bungalow, not exactly on par with the Tuileries Palace. Much to his frustration, his captors referred to him as general rather than calling him emperor. His mail was censored. His visitors were vetted. There was almost no the way entire he could goes such nuts. an isolated island. At this but point, man, what the sure, fuck do you care? The guy is such a threat, man. British soldiers and two ships that circled oh, the island. Oh, okay, there you go. <laughs> two thousand British soldiers for one guy and two ships. Twenty-four hours. That is a day, fucking epic. He had actually, once man. been the most powerful man alive. That's actually and fucking epic. Of the victorious Napoleon, <laughs> depict now a I get strong it. leader, hand firmly in jacket. Depictions of Napoleon on St. Helena show a disheveled old man, hand firmly in pants. He had lost everything. And by the way, he was I wonder what his last years looked like. What, what was his uh, hobbies? What did he do there? Did he write books? What did he do? He was only 46. So maybe it's about time you, um, you know what? You're doing all right, kid. Napoleon fought one last battle while on the island. The battle for his reputation. He Depression? spent hours writing his memoirs, espousing his achievements, recording his greatness, and turning himself and his story into a phenomenal legend. And in this battle, he certainly succeeded. His mark on history cannot be denied. After his defeat, the European monarchs had got to work restoring Europe to its traditional balance and reasserting their dominance. But after Napoleon had spread the... What I wonder here is, as an amateur, every time the Napoleon won a war, he took lands from others. Like, I, I take this, I take this. They have beaten Napoleon twice, and they didn't take anything. Like, why not take away Corsica or, or Elsa's Lorraine or Savoy? Influence of the French he Revolution. always took stuff, but These they never take stuff. would I have a difficult time that. regaining their Victoria absolute Victoria Free control. Stop date. France returned to the rule of the Bourbons, but it would go on to stage to another revolution. French and then another one. Not Reaction to, to Napoleon's rule in places like Germany they just beat and Italy them in a big war. propelled forward something. the ideas and feelings of modern unity and nationalism. And his Napoleonic code still remains the basis of law in various modern countries. The modern world owes Pretty a lot man. to Napoleon's Crazy. legacy. He remains statistically possibly the greatest military general in Chat, all jokes aside, I would love in the future, in the next weeks, to watch videos about each one of them. Let me make a screenshot. That's actually fucking sick. Caesar, the Duke of Wellington, I don't know who that is. Khalid, I don't know who that is. Hannibal, yeah. Lysses as Grand was really good in the uh, Civil War, right? I don't know Frederick Great. Zukov fucked up the Germans and Alexander the Great. History and his revolutionary military tactics. But no Germans in the list. The guys at the end of Blitzkrieg and took out France. Tics changed Not the to face celebrate of them, but don't they also? He was the last truly great leader to most... both lead his armies in battle while retaining total political control over Frederick vast the Great is the empire. biggest hero of Germany. There's still hope for Wait, Joe really? Biden, but the man remains somewhat <laughs> of an enigma, Who's that? and we still aren't sure exactly what to make of it. <laughs> I had in never some heard of regards, that guy. Was ah, he the champion of the French Revolution, spreading equality wherever he went, or did he betray it by uh, making himself yeah, we an have absolute to monarch tomorrow. and restricting certain liberties? Was he an ambitious and aggressive conqueror, hellbent on Biden. bringing Europe to its knees? Or was he simply defending himself against an aggressive Europe, hellbent on reducing his power? Some things will continue to be debated. Napoleon died what? at the ask, age of 51, Germans, man. Of stomach cancer, cancer, but man. some believe he may have been poisoned. The British buried him in a tin coffin, inside a mahogany coffin, inside a lead coffin, inside another mahogany coffin. I guess this time, they wanted to make sure he stayed where they put uh, His coffin! was uh, actually on TV two weeks ago because Macron uh, made a speech on his coffin, right? In 1840, his remains. his remains were moved to Paris, where they now rest under the dome yeah. of Les Invalides. The man from humble origins. Isn't that crazy that the real Napoleon is inside that thing, man? Ruthless determination, immaculate skill on the battlefield, kind of crazy, and a man. hefty dose of luck, who was determined to make his mark on history, did just that. There is no immortality, well, like the one that beat he Napoleon said, at but the memory that is left in the minds of men. And in that sense, Napoleon knew. Wait, there's no immortality, but the memory that is left in the minds of men. To have lived without glory, without leaving a trace of one's existence, is not to have lived at all. Damn. Oh, deep shit. Deep shit that I disagree with. I mean, maybe in this time period, but nowadays, I disagree. You can have... You can have big. You can have a great life without having overall impact. If if you are on a small scale, and you do shit on a small scale, why not? I disagree with this. That's a big sentence, man. A big he would punch. live on forever. Big shit. Oh, and to reiterate, he was definitely 
Average height. He's talking about the mortality, the... though. True. Ah, uh, yeah, you're right. He's talking about the mortality, though. Yeah. Well, you're right. You're right. The yeah. time. Pretty good video, man. Pretty good video. Okay, I, I have to fucking watch something about Friedrich the Great tomorrow. Apparently, a big German hero I don't know shit about. And we watched some great videos, man. I really learned a lot here. Big shout out to Oversimplified. Check out his videos. Follow them. I don't think he needs my shout out. Yeah, gentlemen, that was my stream. I now uh, have to cook. That's why I stop a bit uh, earlier. I'm eating a bunch of bread because I want to lose weight. <laughs> we will see. Thanks for watching, boys. I love you. Check out uh, all the stuff, you know. Be nice to each other and yeah, don't invade Russia. All the best, boys.